Good evening, everyone. How are we doing? Good to see you here. I see. Hi, Jane. How are you doing? Hi, Margaret. Hi, Larry. Who else is watching? Rose. Hey, good to have you guys here. Great to see you. Drop me a hi. Drop me a comment. <laughs> Drop us a like and a love. Just helps the algorithm and helps people find us as well. So, alrighty. Thanks for watching today. Um, today's topic. Right. I'm just going to get straight to it. The best weight loss. Sorry, the best exercise for weight loss. <laughs> have a guess. Hey, Robert. Hey, good to have you here. Have a guess. Oh, I see Jane's had a guess walking. Beautiful. Uh, anyone else got a got a guess as to what exercise you think is the best? Come on. You can give me some more guesses. <laughs> I know my my phone, the comments are a little delayed on here. Weights. All right, we got another another guess. Weights. Yep. Best exercise. More than none. <laughs> hey Lisa, good to see you too. All right, okay. This is fun. This is fun. And I have to say that I for many, many, many years, I didn't know the truth. And I was doing it all wrong. All wrong. <laughs> and I see that a lot of people also make the assumptions that I did way back when and are probably not necessarily getting the results that they want um, as a result. Hello, Sandy. <laughs> Good to see you too, my friend. Alrighty, so I'll just jump to it and I'm going to explain why afterwards. So what is the best exercise for weight loss? And essentially it's not exercise. Exercise is not good for fat loss. <laughs> How's that? No, let me explain. Um, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it movement and this is, it's called NEAT. Non-exercise activity thermogenesis is actually the best thing uh, to actually help you burn body fat. Now, if we just take a step back and think about how we create body fat loss, it's by being in a negative calorie balance or a slight calorie deficit so that our body can then tap into the uh, energy stores that we have in our fat cells, i.e. fat. If we want that storage tank to start disappearing, to start coming down, we actually need to start putting a little less energy in so that our body actually has the chance to dip into those uh, to those stores um, in, in order to just power us through our day. Now, formal exercise itself actually does very little to help you achieve that negative calorie balance. Why is that? Because when you exercise, you are using glucose for energy. You are depleting your muscles of glucose energy and then your body is going to ramp up hunger so that you are motivated to eat more to replace that stored energy. This has been the case for a lot of people and this was the case for me. So when I say I've been there, I, I have, I know how much exercise you actually need to do to make a difference to your body if your diet is not on point. And it is so hard. Uh, it took me actually working in fitness and I still didn't quite understand it back then, but I was able to really achieve my ideal and I guess my lightest and my fittest um, body weight when I worked in fitness for 18 months. And it wasn't because necessarily I was doing a lot of exercise. I was, uh, in fact, I really started like I became the fittest I'd ever been because what I was doing was actually exercising with my, my club members. I had a small, small fit, um, corporate fitness franchise and I started exercising with my members and I actually started, we had used to start having like little competitions as well. And of course the boys would want to beat me. And then I was like, well, I can't let the boys beat me. I've got to beat the boys um, because I'm, I'm the trainer here. 
And so it pushed me to be able to become the fittest and the leanest and, and the lightest that I'd ever been. Uh, I was about 56 kilos at the time. And I just, I felt like a gazelle, but that's because I was, um, I was doing a lot of exercise and I was on my feet for eight hours a day training people, even if I wasn't actually training for four, five and a half days a week, I was on my feet. So neat right doing more neat but i was also becoming a lot fitter and stronger as well as i as i left the fitness industry and went back into corporate life knowing that i was going to be sitting on my butt for at least eight hours a day it was probably more like 10 hours in that desk chair at work I knew that I didn't want to lose this fitness and this, <clears throat> you know, this new body that I had had been able to create. So I made sure I got up, crack it on. I'd been used to getting up at, well, waking up at you know, just before five o'clock anyway, and having to open my club at six o'clock in the morning. So, uh, so I kept up that routine. I kept waking up early and going into the gym uh, for just after six o'clock and smashing it out for an hour, like really, really doing these tough, hard out cardio workouts. Um, and that was, you know, four, five, sometimes six days a week. Um, when um, at, at this particular job, I used to work with um, a couple, they weren't married at the time, um, but they got married later. Uh, she does, uh, triathlons he does ironmans like and he said to her about me watching me work out oh my god she's like an energizer bunny <laughs> i was just go 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 push 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 drenched in sweat and that that was to try and just maintain what i'd achieved without putting on weight and it was tough. It was like I was training for a marathon. It was like I was training for an Ironman. So I know how hard you have to work in order to even just maintain something that you've achieved. Um, and then, of course, I, if you've ever heard me talk about my story, you know, this over exercising was become sort of even though I was even though I was stretching and you know trying to cool down and do you know look up take care of my body uh, I obviously wasn't eating the optimal diet at the time and you know recover recovery of cells probably wasn't where it should be in order to be going so hard all the time and um, and I was getting injured all the time so when injuries would come and I couldn't train for a period of time or couldn't train that hard for a period of time that's when my weight would start creeping back on um, and uh, or if I was traveling for work or traveling for holiday or just taking time off uh, it my weight would come back on and I started developing this mindset that I absolutely needed to be doing this and doing this hard out cardio exercise like if I stopped doing the cardio then my weight would creep up if I wanted to get back more into weight training and leave the cardio then my weight would creep back up again and so you know it wasn't doing anything to get me further into a calorie deficit in fact it was just that when I wasn't doing it I started putting on the weight again and it was very, very, very hard to maintain. So the exercise actually does very little to get you into a negative calorie balance. Um, I've also had another client that I've worked with coming to me like frustrated that she wasn't seeing the results, even though she was working out really, really hard. Um, but there was, there were a lot of things that we changed about her diet. Um, the things that she was eating, uh, emotional eating, overeating, uh, and some of her other habits that she had as well. And once we fixed that up, once we fixed up what was going in, then the results started to happen. So it's not that she wasn't working out hard enough. She was. It's just that the, she wasn't now in a calorie deficit in order to be able to achieve her, her weight loss results. Um, another friend of mine, Alan, um, he Alan uh, Calamus. Um, so if you've ever seen Alan posting his recipes in the group, uh, he's a 
cardiologist over in the US and um, you know, he sent me through a, a blog that he wrote. Um, he sent it to me recently, but he wrote it some time ago where he actually started to do, you know, he started to exercise in order to try and help him with his weight loss goals as well. And it actually did nothing. And he was like really frustrated. And, um, and so he actually then started to track his food and his exercise. And he realized that he was actually now eating more uh, because he was exercising and that's why he wasn't seeing results. So this is what can happen when you exercise more, you eat more, <laughs> you eat more to recover from all of that energy that you've just burned. You need to replace it and you get hungrier, which is normal. Your body now needs a whole heap more fuel to go through that, uh, that repair cycle, to repair all the damage that you've just done in your body uh, and, all, and replace all that energy that you've just burned as well. Um, so, um, so exercise actually does, you know, specific exercise like that actually does very little to get you into that negative calorie balance. Now, here's what I'm not saying. <laughs> I am not saying um, that you don't eat more when you, when you exercise, you absolutely need to, please do. You absolutely need to, but just don't rely on exercise for weight loss. That 30 to 60 minute workout that you do each day as well is so little, um, in terms of the overall calorie burning that you do, um, throughout your, throughout your total day, that is what you do for the other 23 to 23 and a half hours of the day that is so much more important for you in terms of your calorie burning. All right. Um, and this is why generally moving your body more or being on your feet more throughout the day is actually going to increase your overall burning capacity throughout the day without necessarily really ramping up the hunger and your body needing extra fuel in order to repair. Um, even I, I've heard Dr. Michael Greger talk about it and this might've even been in how not to diet. I can't quite recall, but he said, even just fidgeting, like, you know, just like little movements like this throughout your day, if you're fidgeting in your chair all day, you know, even that can burn more energy for you than an hour of exercise, which seems crazy. I know now what I also don't want you to take away from this message is that this is giving you permission to just sit on the couch and not do any exercise, right? I'm not saying that either. No way. Daily exercise or what I call movement um, in a way that you love is so important for many other things. It doesn't have to be, you know, a prescribed form of exercise necessarily. It's just about moving your body more, getting up more, but doing something, doing something that is, um, yeah, doing daily movement, daily exercise is great for so many, so many reasons for our health. It's about the health of our body. It's great for the physical health of your body. Think about, you know, strong muscles, strong bones, strong tendons and ligaments, strong and lubricated joints. All of this is going to help protect you against falls later in life. It's going to help protect against sarcopenia, which is the natural um, muscle loss that we experience as we age. Um, and particularly as we get to our menopause age, uh, ladies, I'm now officially in menopause. As we hit menopause, it is even more important that we work our muscles to keep our muscle mass, um, I guess, high. Um, keep our, to be able to keep our muscle mass and, and not lose it. This is going to help keep your metabolism high as you age. You don't want your metabolism to fall because then you need to start eating less and less and less. And that also can start leading to some health problems um, if you're not getting enough nutrition. Exercise is great for the heart and the lungs, right? Get that heart pumping, um, you know, work your lungs so that you ha you can breathe easily. Uh, it exercise produces endorphins and helps you feel great. You like you get that natural high. You might have heard runners talk about the runners high. Well, 
I, yeah, that's what I used to experience. I used to love running. I used to love how I felt afterwards. But you know what? My knees, my calves, my ankles, <laughs> they didn't like me so much. And maybe that was because of the diet that I was eating that I wasn't able to, I wasn't repairing the damage um, as much as I needed to. But yes, exercise just makes you feel great. You feel great, like you feel strong in your body. You get that natural high. You just feel happy. Um, it also helps burn off stress throughout your day. It actually helps lower, even though you, as you exercise, you do increase your cortisol levels while you are exercising. It actually helps to lower your overall cortisol levels throughout the day. You know, when I was working um, in corporate retail, uh, I used to go to the gym first thing in the morning. I wanted to get it out of the way before my day. Uh, and I found that I just, anytime I was doing the exercise in the morning, I just felt like I hit my working day with feeling great, like feeling on fire, feeling really charged and motivated. And I was able to power through my day. And it was like little things didn't bug me. Um, I was able to handle the stress so much better handle the environment so much better <laughs> bullshit and the deadlines and all the the drama that goes on in corporate environments I was just you know just water off a duck's back but if I for some reason had had to miss a workout in the morning I always made sure particularly when we had um when either we were across like we had a, a gym that I was a member of across the road um at one of the locations and when we moved location we actually had a gym in the office so I would always make sure that I took my bag with me to the office because I knew that by lunchtime if I hadn't had my morning workout I'd be wanting to kill somebody by lunchtime I'm like oh get me out of here I'm going to do my workout and then I'd come back feeling so much better so exercise does help you to lower your cortisol levels and it's just helps you deal with stress so much better it, it helps you deal with your emotions so much better too like it is great for your mental health so um it, it'll, it's also really great for sleep you'll notice that when you're exercising you sleep so well like you just feel you naturally get tired at the end of the day your body gets worn out it's because it's saying right we've got to go and do the, the repair work now you just damaged your body today we actually need to go in and do all the repair work so it does that overnight while you're sleeping and when you are sleeping better you handle your stress and your emotions so much better as well because your body is able to go in and clean out all the junk that's built up during the day including in your brain and so sleep and exercise together sorry sleep um exercise sleep um have this beautiful like up spiraling impact on your not just your uh your sleep but you know on your mental health and your stress your ability to uh handle stress whereas when you're not exercising you'll see you spiral downwards you actually like you are not handling stress you're not handling your emotions then because you're stressed out and you're emotional you're not sleeping properly and it has that really negative cycle it also impacts your weight loss when you're not sleeping so when you're sleeping well it actually helps you to uh rest oh, sorry repair and detox your body so that you can um, actually drop body fat as well uh, exercise is great for detoxing and cleansing your body you detox through your sweat through your breath and um, and you also you, your body is able to cleanse out old cells now this is called autophagy and dr. Michael Greger talks about this in his new book that's coming out soon how not to age I heard him do a talk about that uh, just yesterday so yes exercise is a great way um, to to cleanse out your old cells and uh, you know keep yourself um, I guess young youthful prevent yourself from aging so there are so many benefits to exercise that you you want to be exercising you want to ex exercise for your health for the health of your body because it's a healthy thing to do and because you um, want to be a healthy person you prioritize being a healthy person being a healthy person is who you are and, and what you uh, what you desire I guess what you prioritize in your life but for those of you who I've been speaking to who think that your answer to weight loss is more exercise or that you need to start exercising in order to lose your weight 
I just want to put you right here. I want to correct you here because relying on exercise for your weight loss is the long way to go. Believe me. Like I said, I have been there even just to maintain my weight. And when I would put the weight back on and then, you know, in those moments when I couldn't exercise and then I would come back to the gym and try and, try and work even harder um, and to try and get myself back to where I was. And of course, all that extra work would just make me more injured and have that, you know, that, that same sort of spiraling impact for me. And also, I know that the amount of exercise that you have to do in order to achieve a negative calorie ba balance is insane. It is just not possible for, for most people to be able to do that amount of exercise. You have to work out like you are training for a marathon or a triathlon or an Ironman or something crazy like that. All right. And that's OK if you are doing something like that no worries you can see some results but it is a slow route and as soon as you stop training for whatever weight reason the weight will come back if you're not amending your food the loss in body fat is going to come from you being in a negative calorie balance and we achieve this the easiest way through what we eat through what you put in into your mouth now, I just want to talk for a moment here about muscle building, muscle building, um, building muscle f to increase your metabolism um, so that you can burn more energy. Yes. So this is we build. Um, this is very important. And I said before, especially as we age um, and we we build muscle, obviously, through weight training. And yes, uh, if you build more muscle your base metabolic rate will be higher and yes you will burn more fuel throughout the day yes your body will look toned and firm instead of saggy which is what we all want isn't it but it is a slow process it you got to look at this as a, a lifestyle like it's not just a, you know, you can't expect to be putting on tons of muscle in a short period of time. That will not happen. You ask any bodybuilder. <laughs> um, and you, and to, in order to actually create new muscle tissue, you don't just eat more protein, by the way. <laughs> you actually need to be in a calorie surplus. So you need to be eating more calories than your body burns naturally during the day, even with all that excess um, uh, weight training, right? Which, and that is the opposite to creating fat loss, which is where we need to be in a calorie deficit. So you can see the two don't really go hand in hand. Now you speak to any bodybuilder who talks about wanting to build muscle and they talk about the gain period and then the shred period. This is why they do, you know, gain, they do, um, they have different periods and they are, um, they talk about putting on a bit of fluff, a bit of fat while you are in that muscle building part of your journey, because that's what's going to come. That's what's going to happen when you're in a calorie surplus, you're going to put on some extra fat, but you're going to put on some extra muscle. And that's why they then go into a calorie deficit um, phase when they are looking to shred to go on competition. All right. So if you're wanting to build some muscle, you've got to be in a calorie surplus, which is the opposite to being in a calorie deficit for fat loss. So they kind of don't go together. You can, you can do, you can cycle them if you want to, but just know that you're probably going to be putting on some body fat as you put on some muscle. Um, now for women, now we can, uh, gain, about one pound of muscle per month and that's it's fairly slow and we still need to be in that calorie surplus and training hard and to failure now most people don't really know what training to failure is it's not just ah, oh, you know that's about it it's not just 
oh, my muscles are a bit tired now. It's like you need to be pulling an ugly face and you can't speak and you're grunting. And it's like, ah! if you've ever heard Kim, Kim Constable and her ah! sounds, <laughs> that's what training to failure sounds like. And there are no pretty faces <laughs> when we are training to failure. No, we're pulling our ugliest faces. All right. So you actually need to be in a calorie surplus and you need to be training that hard in order to put on muscle. Now, when you're in a calorie deficit, a slight calorie deficit, you can lose about one pound or well, ladies about one pound of body fat per week, which is about average for a woman and average for a man is about 1.5 to two pounds per week. That's kind of like the safe, safe average numbers that we look at. Um, anything more than that and likelihood is that you're not um, losing body fat. It's likely, you know, healthy mass that you're healthy mass or healthy weight like glucose or water that you're losing um, and anything less than that. And, you know, probably not quite in the calorie deficit that you need. So trying to gain muscle in order to increase your base metabolic rate so that you can burn more fuel and, you know, tap into your muscle stores. It's kind of like the the long way to go about it. Yes, you might burn, you might um, putting on muscle is going to lead to having a high base metabolic rate, but don't forget you actually need to eat more calories to keep that um, muscle burning. And again, it can be hard to get into a calorie deficit um, if you're eating more calories too. So um, gaining muscle to lose fat is the slow way, but I still recommend that you do this. <laughs> I'm not saying don't weight train. <laughs> I'm saying still weight train. Um, I highly recommend that everyone do some form of strength training, whether you are like training to build muscle or, um, you know, just wanting to train to have strong muscles. I just, you know, you want to be strong. You want to have strong muscles. You want, you know, to, to shape, to, to reshape your body. Um, you want to, you know, make sure that you look firm and not saggy. You want to avoid sarcopenia, which is the natural muscle loss as we age. But you're not going to, um, like, I think it was in, again, I heard, uh, no, who was it? I can't remember. It might have been something on um, The Proof, or it might have been Dr. Michael Greger. I can't quite remember. Either, either way, eating more protein does not help you um, uh, avoid muscle loss. It doesn't. <laughs> the only thing is exercise. Sorry, yes, it was Michael Greger. It was the... the um, talk on his new book coming out, uh, How Not to Age. Yes, so he said there is no science behind the myth that eating more protein on its own is going to avoid muscle loss, and particularly in older people too. It's using your muscles. It is strength training. So I highly recommend that you do this. And I, over my lunch break today, I'm going to head out to the gym and go and do my strength training today. All right. So, but in order to lose your body fat, it's all where your diet is. It is diet. And it is that non-exercise activity thermogenesis. General moving, just generally getting more movement on your feet throughout your day. So find more ways to be upright instead of sitting. Uh, if you have a sit-stand desk, my desk is a sit-stand desk, and I'll move it up and down um, throughout my throughout my day just to change that energy up. Um, park further away from your destination and walk more. You've probably heard this a thousand times. Yep, just getting on your feet more. Better still, walk to your destination instead of taking the car. <laughs> Uh, that's what I do around my neighborhood. Um, if I want, want to go to the supermarket, you know, over the other side, I know I live next to one, but it's small, doesn't have everything. So sometimes I go to the other two supermarkets, uh, that are about, I don't know, half an hour, 20 minutes away. Uh, if I go get my eyelashes done or go down the shops, you know, I will walk. I love just getting out and using that as an excuse to go and get a walk. Even if I've already had my walk for the day, sometimes it's like, okay, great. Now I get a second walk in for the day. Um, excuse me, take the stairs. <laughs> I'm thankful here. I'm up. Um, I'm on the fourth floor. There's no lift. 
So I have to take the stairs. Uh, when I go down to the car park, uh, it's a different building and uh, I don't take the lift, I take the stairs. Um, even if, oh no, actually only, the only time I take the, the lift is if I've got you know, heavy stuff I'm carrying with me like a heavy suitcase, which is a pain in the ass to take down the stairs. Um, so yeah, take the stairs where you can. Um, get out for a stroll at lunchtime if you are, you know, working, say in an office environment, you know, even just getting out for a little walk during the day on top of normal exercise. I'm not saying, you know, but if you're not doing anything at the moment, then this is, can be a great way to start. You know, even just putting on your favorite music and dancing around your living room, right? That is moving your body. You will feel great when you've done it, honestly, and you're listening to your favorite music. Get out to, into nature and do, do things that you love in nature, whether that's, you know, going for a hike, going, you know, taking your kids, your grandkids, your, your dog, whatever, to the park and actually playing with them. Remember, um, was it last year when I went home to New Zealand um, in July, there was a lot of sitting around. I'm like, oh, can we just get out and do something? I want to move my body. And so uh, we took my nephew to the park and I was, the, I was the big kid at the park playing with him. And it was so much fun. I was getting like the endorphin rush. And that was, yeah, that was really good just to get the body moving, get some energy moving. Right. So, so definitely get more, find more ways just to move your body in a way that you enjoy every single day. Exercise doesn't need to be punishing. We want to enjoy it. You know, put a podcast on, put a, put some music on, make it something that is enjoyable to you. Um, and just make sure that you are just finding those little ways to um, move your body every single day. Um, but yes, Prescribed exercise for that 30 to 60 minutes a day will do very little to get you into a calorie deficit. The majority of your fat loss is going to come from what you put in your mouth. And if your diet is also health promoting whole plant foods, then you get to eat plenty of food, you get to fill your belly, you get to never go hungry, and you get to easily achieve a negative calorie balance without even thinking about it. Plus, with all that beautiful nutrition going into your body like the high carbohydrate content the vitamins the minerals the phytoestrogens sorry for your phyto phytonutrients and all the yummy stuff that we want from our whole plants you have all this incredible energy that makes you want to get out and move your body more so it's this beautiful upward cycle and and then when you do your exercise, because you are eating this high nutrient dense diet, it's giving you all of the necessary nutrition to help repair your body and help it recover fast. So you can go again fast instead of getting constantly injured like I was when my diet wasn't optimal. So nature didn't get it wrong, guys. <laughs> all the nutrition that we need in the right proportions to create health vitality and a healthy body has been packed into our natural food already. We don't need to overthink things. Fruits, veggies, whole grains, legumes, mushrooms, herbs and spices with a smattering of nuts and seeds. Eat it as whole as possible. All right. That is your answer to healthy fat loss and just move your body more every day. We were not meant to be sedentary. We are meant to move our body, but you do not need to do punishing, thrashing workouts like I used to do thinking that is the answer to your body fat loss. Um, so good to have so many people here, my goodness. Let me know if you've got any questions, team. Hi to you all who are watching. It's good to see you. Um, so now, uh, next February, I am going to be releasing one of my amazing programs. Uh, it is a four week kickstart program. I have had various different versions of this and I have, um, I have taken all the learnings that I um, all of the great stuff that I've, uh, that people have experienced from the past, and I'm going to be making it even better. <laughs> like I've got all the ideas for this program and I love it. I love it. I love it. And it also, it's actually going to be incredible value, um, 
for you know particularly compared to you know what you what else you might get out there but what I'm looking for um, uh, is, is 10 people who might be willing to come on the journey with me and like give me like be the people who can give me feedback to help me refine and make this even better All right um, you'll be giving me feedback as we go through uh, what you want more of what you want less of what you like what you didn't like um, and yeah for you for those 10 people I'm only looking for 10 I'm going to give you a massive discount on the price of this to uh, you know make it worth your while so we're going to be kicking off properly next February but I'm looking for those 10 people now I really want to secure those 10 people so that I can start to give you information start to um, brainstorm the ideas with you get some feedback from you so that I can make this the best thing possible so if this is for you th this program will be for you if you are experiencing like not you're not feeling like you're in tip top health at the moment you might be feeling say low in energy you've got some weight that you want to lose you, you might have digestive problems or skin problems or experiencing menopause symptoms um, you might even have things like high cholesterol or, or blood pressure or something like that um, and this is particularly good if you are not yet you know whole food plant-based and you really want to kickstart your way of eating uh, into whole food plant-based for you know quick health and quick weight loss wins um, you or you know you may be somebody who's really gotten off track with your whole food plant-based eating and you know your, your health's gone backwards maybe put on weight and you want a solution just to help get you get you back into it get you back into the groove and into the swing of it all right so um, this would be for you I highly recommend that you know you um, that we have a chat if this is you because um, this is going to be the the cheapest way to get into the program um, there is going to be video training content there will be amazing delicious recipes and you know meal plan shopping list all that sort of stuff there'll be um, guidebooks um, to help you you know help you know what you're doing uh, there'll be community support there'll be weekly coaching so this is going to be fantastic so uh, if you would like to be a part of this and be part of my first 10 uh, then please just drop me a comment below just um, maybe say interested in the comments and I will reach out to you via DM and we can have a chat um, about this or just simply DM me um, on Facebook that's the obviously the easiest place to get hold of me and seeing you're all in my group and you're watching it now so yeah just send me a DM and just say look I'm interested in that kickstart program can you give me some more details so I'm going to give you a whopping discount if you are one of the first 10 people um, before I start promoting it um, which I'll start I'll start promoting it very soon too so we want to get in and get you locked in place and get you sorted out first but yes um, let me know if you would be keen on that um, okay so I just want to see are there any questions that you have about exercise team what questions do you have about the exercise thanks for dropping in your uh your guesses so i think you all got it wrong there's not not hit it's not weights it's not weight walking is good you'd probably consider that uh you know almost like non-exercise activity thermogenesis but you need to be going slow enough but yeah neat is actually the best form of movement <laughs> to help you achieve a negative calorie balance right um anybody no, there's a bit of a delay here all right doesn't look like there's any uh, any questions if uh if you do happen to have a question just keep typing it in the comments and uh, and i'll come back and answer you soon all right folks oh margaret is it better to wait for weight loss completed before? no no margaret no do it now <laughs> start it as soon as possible because here's the thing as you lose the weight as you lose the body fat you'll actually naturally lose a little bit of muscle mass as well because you're now um, eating in a calorie deficit so you actually if you want to remain um, you know keep the muscle mass that you have while losing the body fat then go start with your strength training now 
Um, it's just going to help you preserve that muscle mass so that when you lose the weight, you're not just going to look like a smaller version of you do now. You're actually going to look uh, a bit more toned and lean because you, you'll be burning the body fat and keeping the muscle underneath. So I hope that makes sense. Great question. And you know what? It was something that came to mind as I was going through, um, as I was talking earlier, and I thought, oh, I've got to talk to that as well. Um, and then I forgot. So thank you. Thank you for that prompt. All righty, team. All right, I'm going to round up now. If there's any other questions, just drop them in the comments and I'll come back to you. All right, have a wonderful day. Bye.